Hi guys, it's Delta Primus here from Illuminatum Infinite. Uh, I am recording this to give you guys a insight into dogfighting uh, in Star Citizen. Uh, as uh, novices that have joined the corporation, some of you will know all of this stuff already. Some of you will be completely fresh players. And as a result, um, this will be invaluable to improving your dogfighting. Um, it's, it's a longish video. We'll chapter it and you can cut through it as you like. If you're doing the Dogfighting 101 course with us, then you will need to um, watch this before you take part. So the first thing I want to cover is settings um, and this is to make sure that your cockpit is set up correctly and your virtual joystick which is your mouse is also set up correctly. If you're set up with a, a HOSAS or HOTAS um, you're probably already way ahead here so um, I will talk you through the settings. So to get into settings you're going to press escape, you're going to go to options uh, and then you're going to find yourself in game settings. Now um, the first thing you're going to want to do is turn off show hints and control hints. They should both be no. VJoy visibility, um, I'm going to want that as always visible. Um, and then I'm also going to want the dead zone for the mouse on as well. Now, your, your virtual joystick here is effectively the mouse. Now, what that looks like is... Um, is if I take you back out to here, it's this uh, line between the my where my mouse pointer is and the crosshairs and how long you want that to be effectively that this forms your vertical joystick so that uh, how and how responsive we want that and how long we want that tail to be now when you first start I think the default is 19 which means in order to move the mouse you have to try and drag uh, sorry to move the put the nose of the ship you have to drag it miles to be able to get it to actually move now we don't want that because we want it to be really responsive we don't want to be like piloting a Taurus when we're actually in a light fighter so we're going to come down to here um, and we're going to go straight to VJoy now um, I, we're going to take these right down to four all right so that's the max that you will be able to move before it kicks in um, now the dead zone is the if you look at again at when I move my mouse it very much moves straight away for me but the difficulty on having this dead zone on zero is that if it is on zero then you're almost never still and you're in like a permanent drift so uh, I've, I always have mine on one percent and that means that I can find a point where I can just sit still um, I've tried it less than that and I just don't like it but again that's personal preference so um, so for this you're going to go uh, driver mouse dead zone percent of the range and you're going to put it to like one percent which is why I've got it on or 0.99 um, you can then copy this right the way through for turrets. The next uh, thing we're going to look at then uh, is to do with the um, the way the way your head moves in the cockpit. Now, a lot of you will notice when you're um, fighting, your um, your eyes will zoom in on the target, uh, and this is supposedly to help you be able to aim, etc. But then you can't see your peripheral vision properly and you can't get an idea of what's going on around you um, and, and, and f uh, you know especially even when you're scanning it's annoying because you can't see all the scanning details that pop up so we're going to get rid of that so we're going to come right the way down to what's the we'll called the look ahead strength so pilot here so I've turned mine off so pilot look ahead enabled off all right, and uh, vehicles targeting enable auto zoom unlock target off as well. All right, so those need to come off. Um, the uh, you can take all these down to zero if you want to be really picky about it. Just make sure that um, it can't actually happen if there's a bug and that off doesn't work for some reason. You can take these right down to zero, but we're just going to turn this off. So turret look ahead enabled off, uh, driver look ahead enabled off. All right, so no on those ones. So global camera shake. So sometimes when you're in like a hurricane or something like that, um, this will make your screen rattle like mad. You can take this one down. I haven't done it since I've deleted my shader cache. It doesn't really bother me. Um, but that's something for you to look at as well. So, and then we're into things like nameplates. So for me, um, I've got, I usually turn this on. It's, I've recently di um, taken off my uh, user um, setting, so I need to go back through it, so I'll do it now. So I wanna see the nameplates. Um, 
their I want to know their contact distance um, and this one's important as well emissions heads up display so uh, what this one basically means that you have a, a heads up display that shows you your IR your cross section and your uh, EM uh, that's really helpful especially if you're flying um, advanced ships like the Eclipse so I always have those on it basically lets you know where you can be locked from or what distance you can be locked from uh, something I just missed is uh, this pilot velocity indicator uh, that wants to be always on okay and I'll explain why later um, we're going to jump across to key bindings next so this is your usual key bindings we're going to change some of the advanced stuff now under vehicle seats and operator modes we're going to uh, change eject to right alt and Y uh, reason being is we don't want you to accidentally um, hit the default setting which will then eject you out the seat so um, right alt and Y is going to be your new eject uh, button so I'm not going to change it but I just want to show you this so under flight and movement there is a setting called decoupled mode which is a toggle left alt and C just make a note of that because you'll need it later so under vehicles power triangle assignment we're going to change this first so what I want you to do is set weapons set to max is one uh, they will come up saying that there's other issues so if I double click this now and change it it'll tell you that this also activates mining modules and it can pin um, index one uh, targets or, or pin targets to index one um, in vehicles I'm we'll change that in a second but everything else doesn't relate to this so it's it's okay so we'll change this in a second next we're going to change uh, engines to two to max and uh, set to max three um, for uh, shields and then reset assignments I have as S5 so under vehicles and targeting we're just going to clear um, the um, these ones because we don't use them we're also going to change self-destruct from backspace to alt and backspace um, and obviously this affects some on foot keybinds but you're not on foot so it doesn't make any difference um, we're going to do this because too many people brush the backspace key and end up with no ship now that we've set up the settings for the game to understand how we want to fly we're now going to set up the screens in your ship now obviously we're learning today in the gladius however that being said we could have um, any uh, any kind of ship that we're going to fly it could be a light fighter heavy fighter it could be a, a you know a cargo vessel it doesn't matter but the most important screens are the ones that you want that are always going to be visible now in this situation the ones that are always going to be visible are these ones here all right so um like even the gladius look you've got two down here that are absolutely pointless because you're not looking at them okay so the, these ones here need to be set up so what i always do is i have self on the left and target on the right so here you go into menu so hold down f go into menu uh, by using the mouse button and you're going to go into self status all right and that gives you your readout here now uh, on this side menu target status okay and that gives us all the information about the target that we need okay that's gonna give us shield information and it's also going to give us our information about the um, signatures etc so one last thing we're going to do here um, is go down it doesn't really apply in this situation um, because it's the the gladius however in other situations it will matter now we're going to go into weapons here now this tells us all the weapons that we've got on board that are, are, are powered all right or unpowered and we can um, turn them on or off okay but I'm not going to do any of that here the important bit is what I call weapon groupings okay now if you look here we have different types of weapons okay so we've got our Gatling gun on the nose and we've got two Panthers on the wings now if um, let's say we change this uh, Gatling to a laser cannon all right or, or we uh, changed it to a Panther that we want these groupings to defer at that stage so now automatically I think Star Citizen uh, will group all of, of the same type together so if we put a panther on here this group I don't know if you can see it let me zoom in uh, so this group that we've got here 
that dictates what button you press to activate it. So group zero means it's my main gun. My left click will uh, activate that weapon. My right click will activate the panther repeaters, right? And if I want both to fire at the same time, I have to hold them down both. But what you can actually do is change them. So I can change that so that they all fire on the right click or the left click, as an example. Now, if I change that, ideally, if I was actually setting this up properly, I'd have um, panther repeaters on, on all of them. Um, and that would then uh, all fire on my zero click, all right, my main left click. Um, and that that's an important um, factor there to be aware of when you're in other ships. Is are the are the guns set up so they all fire at the same time, or are they split? And that's that's what we're we're interested in, all right, with this screen. That brings us nicely actually to this screen here. Um, so this is your power screen, all right, and it doesn't need to be up for you to be able to use it. And the smart ones of you will notice that we've just uh, played with those settings in the back end so that you can play with this a little bit better. So to give you an example, um, if I press one, all my power goes into weapons two thrusters three shields okay um, and then if i want to reset it's f5 it, this seems a little bit advanced but when power is in the middle what that means is your power that your ship generates is being equally distributed to all of those things so you can fire your weapons and they will reload at a given rate you can get hit in your shield and your shield re will regenerate at a given speed all right and you can use your boost and your boost will regenerate over time now at different phases in combat, we want different things, all right? So, um, and 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 we would want different things from our, our ship. And if you can almost view this as overclocking, you're onto a winner. So, um, if, I if you look, um, to give you an example of what this does, if we look to my uh, weapons up here, my energy weapons, you can see I've got 38 rounds in each panther, okay? Now... Um, if I switch the weapons uh, to be focused, uh, to be overclocked, you can see that's gone up to 46 rounds. So my burst has gone from this. Okay, before it needs to reload, to this. And that is a massive difference and can be the difference between you finishing your target off before having to reload uh, or crippling them. Okay, and so that's why that's why that's important. Now, the more astute of you will also have noticed something. If I um, change it back, so I've reset and I start to fire and we look at my um, reload speed. that you can see how long it's taking for it to completely reload. If I switch the weapons back into uh, overclocked mode, then I'm gonna fire. I've got longer firing for a start. Uh, and then when we start to reload, it's full much quicker. So the capacitor on those weapons is filling up exponentially faster. So that's what happens if we uh, overclock our um, uh, our, our weapons. Um, now thrusters is exactly the same. So right now if I was to move uh, and burn you can see that my thrusters deplete at a given rate. Probably should use it more. But you can see it's going down and it will recharge at a given rate. So you can almost see it's almost one per second. Now if I switch into thruster mode you can see that that recharge is exponentially faster all right so i've changed power to focus on thrusters and that's gone up faster i don't know if it does the same thing for the amount i'm pretty sure that the amount that you get in boost is the same if we do the same for shields i don't know whether shields have changed since i last played but to give you um if I move into, it's difficult to do without someone, but effectively what used to happen is when you overclocked your shields, you would get both more shield and a faster recharge rate. Um, I, I think you still get the more shield and the refaster rate. I'm not sure, but we, we, you know, we'll test it later. But for me, it's always been my habit that when I'm on the approach, uh, and we'll go into this later, 
I want more power in my shields because I want them to recharge and I want them to be harder to take down. I'll clarify that uh, and I will put it in the video later. Now, we'll talk about times that we'd actually use this. Uh, I've already said that on the approach, I'd probably have my, um, I'd probably have my shields up um, on overclocked mode. Um, but as soon as I get into a merge and I'm actually in that orbit, I'm going to switch straight back into uh, weapons overclocked. Uh, and the reason why I'm going to do that is because I then could give a 46 round burst straight into uh, my enemy and, um, and, and recharge them quicker. So my DPS goes up higher every time. Now I'm hoping at this point that you've uh, got the basics of how to fly in Star Citizen, otherwise you're day one fresh, but we'll cover it anyway because we're going to need it later um, and an understanding of it. So your W, A, S and D keys are your thrust, okay? So if we look at this, my W key moves me forward, you can see my rear thrust is lighting up there. Um, now you can see already, if by pressing the uh, the S key, my forward thrusters are ignited, that's to slow me down and move me backwards. My A um, is moving, you can see my right thrusters have ignited and are pushing me left, and then my uh, D key is going to ignite my left thrusters and, and uh, thrust me right. Now, um, I just want to point out something to you at this point as well. You can see when I'm not using those thrusters in a default mode, um, the the an antagonistic thrusters set fire as soon as I let go of that key, and that's important because it means that there's no momentum. All right. So if I push forward and I let go of the key, I'm already decelerating as soon as I stop using um, my thrusters, and that is called coupled flight because you are using the the uh, antagonistic uh, thrusters um, in a coupled manner okay um, if we weren't then that would be decoupled and we will talk about that in a minute the other uh, thing that we have on our left hand the other movement if you like is our roll now E will rotate us to the right and Q will rotate us to the left, all right? And that's pretty straightforward. So um, going into our cockpit, uh, depending on where you're at uh, for in the atmosphere, um, you'll also get your horizon and your degrees, all right? So you'll be able to uh, see which way's up and which way's down. We can't see it because we're in space, um, but we'll cover that in atmospheric flight at some point, I'm sure. Um, now moving on to the right hand, you've got your pitch, okay? Um, now your pitch is the angle that you are um, looking at on a Y axis, okay? So up and down, okay? You've also got your yaw, which is to the left and right, okay? So pitch and yaw is on the right and then thrust and roll is on the left. Uh, hand okay so those are sort of the basics of movement and um, you know event basically the idea being is that you will then um, stream these two hands together um, unless you're completely dyspraxic and you'll be able to um, you'll be able to fly uh, and move around obstacles okay I'm looking for an obstacle here uh, but there's not one forthcoming but you can start to, to move around okay so now we're going to move on to um, decoupled flight. Now, the way that we activate decoupled flight is um, is the Alt and C key. Now, to know whether you're in coupled or decoupled, you look across here. So CPLD, you guessed it, is coupled. All right. Whilst that's active, it means that your thrusters are working in a coupled mode. So if we turn that off now, um, you will see uh, the velocity um, here will not change when I'm not using my thrusters. It will only change when I'm using them. So to give you an example of this, I'm just going to start to move. So I've only moved slightly and I'm still moving at 32. There's no braking taking place. And what this allows me to do is uh, be able to move forward and rotate pitch and yaw and still know I'm, I'm traveling in this direction. Now, how we know where we're aiming 
is these two symbols here. So these arrows pointing together mean I'm moving forward. Now, if I move in the opposite direction, you can see that those arrows have now inverted. So we've now got those arrows facing away from each other, which means I'm traveling backwards at a rate of 97. Now you will notice, uh, because I moved the mouse just then, that those arrows haven't changed, which because I can turn uh, the whole ship around and I'm still gonna move in that direction, all right? Um, and that velocity indicator is still gonna stay uh, facing the way that I'm traveling away from, all right, or moving in the direction of. So in order to break, what needs to happen is I either push in the other direction or I go back into couple mode and now I will stop, okay? Why that is uh, that velocity indicator is important is because when I am coupled, I need to know which direction I'm traveling because otherwise I will hit an asteroid, um, which is not a cool look. All right, so to give you an example of this now, I'm gonna do, so most of this stuff you can learn from like Buzz Cut Psycho. You can see that that velocity indicator now is, is there. I'm gonna decouple and I'm gonna use space to move upwards, but I can now look at that asteroid as I pass it and I don't blow up. And as long as I target using that velocity indicator, so you can see, so I'm gonna to start to boost now and bring myself back through. You're going to see that velocity indicator is just switched. I'm now flying at the asteroid. I'm going to use my keys to place my uh, velocity indicator as close to that thing as I can. And I'm going to look at it. And if you're PJ, you're going to shrink at this point because you hate this. But I'm now flying past this, and it doesn't matter. Um, because I know that my velocity is where I want it to, to be. That velocity indicator, in that direction of velocity, is outside of that asteroid, okay? So as long as I know where that velocity indicator is, it really doesn't matter what I'm doing direction-wise. I can turn away completely, and I will not hit that asteroid. Okay, and that's decoupled flight. Now, to adjust that, um, and what this allows us to do is orbit more effectively, and we're going to come into this in a second. But by being in decoupled flight, I don't have to constantly press the um, the keys to. I can just feather them, which basically means to press them intermittently to set up an orbit around my target. All right. And it, I, I, being in decoupled mode, and that makes this exponentially easier. If I switch back into coupled mode, I have to be using the thrusters because otherwise I'm not braking. Or otherwise I am braking, sorry. All right, and you can still do it um, and, and set up an orbit like this, but that's it, it, decoupled mode is the way that we would do this because we can just feather that front one uh, and feather our speeds better, all right? And there endeth that part of the lecture. Ah, so that's something else. Actually, we'll go back to uh, that now. The one button I missed out, which is basically my biggest killer for me, is the C button. The C button, if you look in, uh, like I'm not pressing any buttons now and I'm being forced into a, a, a moving forward. The velocity is always like moving forward. C is your cruise control. Um, and that's activated by pressing C. So when you press Alt and C to come back into coupled, uh, if you accidentally click the wrong one, you'll hit C and that'll push you straight into cruise control and it'll push you into whatever you're orbiting. All right.